Hey guys, Ben Pearson with the Roaster Tracker, and today we're going to go a little bit deeper into the future than we normally do. In fact, we're going to go into the realm of science fiction, which is not something I've really done much here on the channel, but we're going to have a go at this. So let's talk about aliens. With all of the telescopes and things that we're starting to get, it becomes increasingly likely that at some point in time in the fairly near future, we're going to detect something out there. And I wanted to talk a little bit about some science fiction ideas that I've thought about how the contact with another civilization could go. And also talk a little bit about how many civilizations might be out there. Now the most famous way of determining how many civilizations may be out there is the Drake equation. And I'm not gonna go over all of the things, but it lists all of the different things like the probability that life will form on a planet, the probability that that species will become intelligent, the prob number of planets per system, the probability that a solar system has a planet at all instead of just a star, and so on and so forth. And it uh, provides an interesting idea. And we're starting to fill out more and more of the variables in the Drake equation. And we're starting to realize that planets are very common and habitable planets are common. So where are all the extraterrestrials? Well, there are some interesting ideas that have come out of science fiction that I wanted to discuss with you guys here. One of the big things in this is, first of all, how many civilizations there are that are, say, at least the technology level of Earth that they're able to go out into space how easy is it to travel between solar systems? Now, with our current means here, and with the means that we can reasonably well seem, it wouldn't be too hard to colonize the solar system, but it would be very, very challenging to colonize other star systems. It's virtually impossible with the knowledge that we have possessed. But if there's some kind of technology that allows for easier transportation between different star systems that we don't know about, well, that could, in fact, give some interesting ideas as to how we could uh, go about doing things. And if it turns out that it's easy to travel to systems, then we have to ask ourselves another question, which is how easy is it to destroy a civilization? And that seems like a very strange question, and there is a particular science fiction book that I don't want to mention in case you want to know, but... I, I read and it posited that it was very easy to destroy a civilization, that it was almost an afterthought. And if you have these two different things come out, then, well, the galaxy becomes a very, very scary place. You see, let's say that, that we could fire off something that was like a nuclear bomb that could destroy an entire star. Now, I think if that had to be an ability, we would probably have noticed this by now. We've been tracking the stars for a long time. And if we saw a star randomly go out, even a relatively not bright one, I think we would know about it. But let's just say that this could theoretically happen and it was easy to, to do this. Well, if you could travel between systems, then you could have an empire formed very, very quickly, and if they advance in technology very quickly, you could get to the point where they could be anywhere. You could multiply very, very fast, and it would be hard to control them, and they could take over essentially the entire galaxy. And presumably this would be a bad thing. So naturally, if it's easy to destroy a system, and it's easy to travel between systems, it's kind of one of these zero-sum games that really the only thing that you can do is destroy the world. And it sounds horrible, but in that kind of a world, that's really the best that you can do. So it's pretty crazy thought there. But I really don't think it's going to be that easy to destroy a system. It is something that is very, very challenging, at least in my mind, to destroy an entire star. Like, it seems like you would need to send something like a black hole or something into it. Maybe that would do the trick. And it would take a while, and it seems likely to have some undesirable effects. So let's just assume that that's not what could happen. Let's 
say that it's easy to travel and harder to destroy a star. And really, you have to destroy the entire star because you could theoretically have a planet that you know, you're going colonizing the outside solar system. It's relatively easy to destroy the life on just one planet, but if they're starting to become advanced enough that you could even detect them, then you would really want to take some kind of action to make sure they're not spreading all over the place. And if you assume there's no faster than light travel, then, well, you're not going to know exactly where they are, so it's going to be very, very challenging. Let's go to the next thought. Let's say it's easy to travel, but it's hard to destroy an entire star. This is really, I think, the world that many, many science fiction things play in. Star Trek, uh, lots of games like Stellaris, Masters of Orion, Star Wars is kind of in this. Really, a lot of science fiction is in this. And in that kind of a realm, well, if you can't destroy the civilization, then you want to make friends with them. And you may form alliances and so on and so forth. And so it's a really interesting thought. It kind of expands civilization like we have on Earth, but to other solar systems, which is probably a big part of the reason why it's so appealing. Now, it remains to be seen how easy it may be to someday have this faster than light travel. But I think this is kind of where most humans that we want to be in is some kind of thing like this. And so that's why a lot of our science fiction tends to end up in this category. So it just kind of expands the scope of what we have to something kind of cool. But let's go to another realm. And there are some books, not very many, that talk about this. But let's say that it's harder to travel. Now, it's pretty easy to conceive of traveling with a relatively small number of people to another star system. We had concepts for doing this in like the 60s using nuclear bombs, specifically hydrogen bombs. There are a couple of interesting concepts. You could launch a ship that was very massive to another star system. Some pretty neat ideas out of these and it's entirely possible, but it would be very, very difficult to send any significant number of people. And quite frankly, you would have to send a lot of people to do something like this with technology that we can imagine today. And so it seems very likely that if this was the case, that uh, you would tend to have like pen pal type relationships. It's relatively easy to talk to another people. And there are some books that I've read that you have like the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, you listen to a message, you hear this message. And then from this message, you can figure out a little bit about the each other and you can start communicating back and forth. And it may take years for this to happen, but it would have some kind of conversation back and forth between people. And, you know, there are a lot of interesting concepts. You may send a spacecraft just to kind of go visit other star systems and collect information that will go be spread throughout the the worlds and something like this and this is something that's entirely plausible too the bottom line is though is this is something that we should probably figure out how difficult is it to destroy a star i don't know that this is something that we could even do and this is obviously something that we should not do but it is worth knowing at least how difficult it is because you know I kind of want humanity to survive and it's something that uh, we should at least consider somewhere in the back of our minds this is some of the great things that we can get from science fiction thank you guys so much for joining me and thank you for humoring me in this that's a little bit different than the normal types of things I do I just uh, found this really interesting and wanted to share this with you guys. Thank you guys so much for everything. And until next time, keep on tracking. Take care, guys.